You have probably seen this relation before. It is one of the most popular teachings of quantum mechanics. It was formulated in 1927 by a physicist named Werner Heisenberg. And the consequences of this relation can be seen not only on a small scale, but also in astrophysics, as it explains the stability of the neutron stars, for example. If you try to squeeze the neutrons into small space, their uncertainty in position becomes very small, and therefore the uncertainty in momentum rises, which creates pressure against gravity holding the star alive. But how can we explain it intuitively? What is going on with these particles? So they behave this way. And when I was studying quantum mechanics at the university, my intuition behind it was that in order to measure a certain quantity of a system, you need to interact with it. And if you interact with it, you transfer energy. And by this, you change the system altogether, and therefore other quantities become uncertain. For example, if you shoot a photon of a certain wavelength, it bounces off of something back, then you might conclude there is something in this area. And you can get better precision if you shoot a photon of smaller wavelength. But the smaller the wavelength photon has, the higher the energy, and therefore it influences the momenta of the system more, and it becomes more uncertain. But this idea doesn't only apply to quantum mechanics, right? It's true for every measurement, even in macro scale. So what is so quantum mechanical about this principle? So I had natural questions. Is it just that we can't measure these two quantities at the same time because the measurement itself messes up the system? But in reality, every quantum mechanical system truly has an exact momentum and position at the same time? Or is it more fundamental? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what is quantum mechanic telling us about this uncertainty. There is going to be a little bit of math, but you don't have to follow it exactly, because I'm going to demonstrate it using animations. And hopefully it's going to be very intuitive. Imagine you have a quantum system, and you can measure a certain quantity like position. It can be anything, for example a particle in a box, and you measure the position of the particle. We are going to make five measurements, and we get certain measured values. You see, we didn't measure the same value of position each time, this means there is an uncertainty in the system. If the position was fixed, it would look like this. But that is not our case. Now the question is, how to properly quantify the spread of measurements? How big the uncertainty in the system is? First, you can calculate what is the average position for all measurements and draw a line. We are going to denote the average by these brackets. Now you can define the deviation from the average delta x as difference between measured value and the average. Since this quantity has positive and negative values, obviously if you try to do the average deviation, you would get zero. So that is not the way. What about squaring them first? This will transform the negative values into positive values. Now if you calculate the average of this, you would get a non-zero number. This quantity is called the variance. And now, if you take the square root, you get a quantity called standard deviation. If we had measurements like this, the standard deviation would be zero. And if they were more spread out, it would be larger. So now back to this relation. What it really says is that the standard deviation in position measurement times the standard deviation in momentum measurement is larger or equal to some small value. So you might sometimes see it written like this, or also in the form of variances. What this says is that if you have a system with a little variance in position measurements, then there will be a large variance in momentum measurements, and vice versa. So now we know exactly what this relation says, and we can now ask more fundamental questions like, where does it come from in quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics is made of six postulates, and the first postulate states that the state of the system is completely determined by the wave function, which satisfies this condition. Okay, so what is the wave function? A wave function is just an ordinary function that is smooth and normalizable. Something you know from the high school. We usually denote it as psi, and in position representation, it is a function of x. 
If you square the wave function, it will show you the probability density of finding the particle in particular position. So for example, in this picture, it is higher probability of finding the particle here than here. This normalization condition requires the wave function to go to zero at spatial infinities. But in limiting case, you can have a periodic wave function, like cosine, and it is a possible solution to the Schrodinger equation if you have a free particle in empty infinite space. This solution says that the particle can be anywhere in space. But this means the maximal uncertainty in position, right? So what about the momentum? You can notice that such periodic function has just a single wavelength, and the wavelength is related to the momentum in quantum mechanics like this. So periodic wave functions have exactly defined momentum. And that is why I said it's a limiting case. And they don't occur in nature, but they are good for demonstrations. But you don't need to have a single wavelength periodic function as your wave function. You can have a combination of many wavelengths. So here I have a little code in Julia and single wavelength is just a periodic function. But if I add another wavelength like omega equals two, the wave function becomes this. You see that its position become more localized for the price that we now have a particle in superposition of two momenta. We can add another wavelength and another and the wave function is more and more localized. Or we can try all the values from minus 10 to 10 where the step between the wavelength is one and get this. We see that the position wave function is becoming more and more localized but there are these peaks everywhere in space. So in reality, the particle can still be anywhere. So where is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? But in reality, having a sharp momenta, even in superposition, is not quite physical. In the code, we have the momenta spread from minus 10 to 10, but with a step of one. But in reality, the step should be infinitesimal, and basically there should be infinite momenta in between. So what happens if we decrease the momenta spread? For example, if I put 0.2, we immediately see that these peaks are further apart. And if we go even lower, they don't fit into this picture. So you can imagine that if we had infinitesimal spread of momenta, all the other peaks would be gone. And here you can also see that the wave function is more and more localized in the center. If you make the limits bigger, we should see the clear peak. And eventually, if we included all the wavelengths from minus infinity to infinity and sum over all the infinitesimal wavelengths, meaning you do an integral like this, you get something called the delta function. You may be familiar with the notation like this using complex exponential, but it is the same thing since the complex part is anti-symmetric and integrates to zero, leaving only real function. We denote this function on a graph usually by arrow like this. It represents a peak that is infinitely large and infinitesimally thin and integrates to one. This would mean maximal localization in position and minimal localization in momenta. These delta functions are quite important piece of math in physics and maybe they deserve their own video, but it is only well defined under integration. So if you happen to work with functions that contain a delta peak and they are not meant to be integrated, you might run into a problems. But anyway, apart from position representation of the wave function, you can also have a momentum representation. So you have a function that gives you a probability amplitude of finding a particle with a certain momentum. These two contain completely the same amount of information and they are related by the so-called Fourier transform. If you Fourier transform a periodic function, you get a delta function. So maximal uncertainty in position means minimal uncertainty in momentum. If you have more wavelengths, you get more delta functions and so on. But in reality, a typical wave function looks something like this. It's called a Gaussian wave packet, and it's made of infinite number of momenta, each having different amplitude. So there is a high chance of finding a particle here and almost zero far from it. Its Fourier transform is another Gaussian function. 
but this time in momentum space. And they have inverse relation between each other. So making the Gaussian smaller in position space will spread out the Gaussian in momentum space and vice versa. If you define a Gaussian like this, then this number here is directly a standard deviation. Making it larger will make the Gaussian more wide and making it small will make it more narrow. You might know this from an IQ test, for example. You have a bell curve like this, which represents the IQ scores of people. It's always defined in such a way that most people score 100. If a test says that you scored 130, then you might feel good, but you also need to know the standard deviation. If it's 50, your score is not that rare, but if it's 10, your score is very rare. And it is known that one standard deviation is such a bit that 68.3% of measurements are contained within this range. But it is not the probability amplitude that we care about, but it is the probability density. So if we define the probability amplitude like this, it gives us the probability density like this. And this is then directly the standard deviation that is in the formula for the Heisenberg uncertainty relations. Then the Fourier transform is proportional to this, and the probability density is like this. From this, you can read off the standard deviation for momentum to be this. Multiplying these two together, we get the standard deviation of position times the standard deviation of momentum is equal to one half. So for Gaussian, it's exactly one half. And therefore we call Gaussian in quantum mechanics as the minimally uncertain configuration. But you can see that this uncertainty is only about the standard deviations. Because you can still know the most likely value of position and momentum simultaneously, since you have a wave function made of single peak. So the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is written deep into the quantum mechanics and not the measuring device. And it's a consequence of the fact that you can't have an exactly localized wave function and exactly defined wavelength of it. So unless we develop a better theory, there is no way around this principle. And while I'm aware of how uncertainty in quantum mechanics works, I wasn't aware of the uncertainty we face in everyday life. One day you live an ordinary life, and the next day you might end up in a life that is completely different. Sometimes in a good way and sometimes in a bad way. And therefore I want to dedicate this video to my mom, who recently passed away very unexpectedly. I was certain she is going to be here for the next 20 years, but suddenly she is gone. She was always the first one watching all of my videos, even though she didn't understand any physics nor English. And she was also the reason why I took this path of becoming a physicist. Because originally, even though I had big interest in physics, I wasn't brave enough to try. Originally, I'm trained car mechanics from the high school. So my career path was also kind of unexpected and uncertain. So if you find this video helpful, it's also her credit. And sorry for venting my depression here. See you next time.